Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I just wanted to break down what I do to prepare for an enduro race. This is going to apply to the first comer or a, an advanced rider going on this first couple of races. So I'm gonna break this down into four parts. The first one being skill. Second is going to be bike maintenance and bike setup. Three is going to be strength and training. And then four is going to be race nutrition. So we'll start with skill. This is by no means going to be a video where I tell you guys everything that you should, guys should work on. I'm just gonna point out some of the main things that really helped me when coming to racing. The one thing that really helped me out with racing and becoming a faster rider was cornering. I can't stress this enough. Cornering is huge when it comes to racing. Being able to rail those corners and not lose much speed coming out of corners is huge. Cornering is one of those skills that is often overlooked and just seemingly seems boring. But I'll tell you what, it makes riding trails so much more fun and enjoyable along with racing. So that has to be my number one tip when it comes to skill. So now we'll move on to number two, which is bike maintenance and setup. You guys know the saying, Happy bike, happy life. Being sure your bike is running in tip top shape is big in embracing because mechanicals are not fun and that can make or break a race. So maintain your bike, make sure it's running good because if you get a mechanical out on that race run, that could, that could totally break the race and uh, erase any idea of getting a podium or any type of good place. So a couple things that I do to make sure my bike is running good is look at all the components. Make sure nothing is worn. So uh, the big one is going to be brakes and tires. So, so for me, this past race that I did, my rotors were bent, my brake pads were cooked, my tires were in not very good condition. So those were two things that I knew I needed to address. So what I do personally to make sure my stuff is running in tip top condition is leave a set of tires for racing. And so basically when you come back from your race, take them off and leave them for your next race. So they're in good condition and just use them until they seem to be in iffy condition. And then what I would do is just uh, swap your ball, your, maybe your bald day-to-day uh, -day tires that you normally would do on just a normal ride and swap them with your, uh, about ha your half-worn uh, race tires. So that's what I would do personally. And then also something I've done in a couple of races is actually replacing the chain. You might be thinking, why do you need to replace the chain? Well, for me, I've personally broken uh, these T-type chains multiple times. And no, they're not even at the master link, which is a little bit shocking to me that this stronger design I'm still breaking, but it's a chain, they break. So many people break all kinds of chains, XT, whatever, SRAM, Eagle stuff. Uh, that stuff all gets broken all the time. So what I would do, what I do is I throw on a fresh chain for a race because the worst thing would be if you got off that start line in that sprint and your chain broke. That could uh, again like end your race. So uh, having confidence in your chain not breaking is going to be huge. So I would get a replacement chain because that is going to ensure that you do not end up breaking a chain during a race run. And again, take it off once you get off the race. As you guys might be able to see on my bike now, I've already swapped all my parts back over to the old ones and those other parts are now waiting for the next race. So that seems to be the best option in terms of making sure everything is reliable and not, you're not gonna get any mechanicals during the race. Um, and then one more thing before we move on to the next step is tire inserts. Depending on the race you're going to, if it's a race that is very rocky, like what I did, which was North Star Enduro, you're going to want your wheels to be protected. Uh, so I threw in Cushcore Trail with, along with my downhill casing Continental uh, tires. And uh, that kept me running pretty much all weekend, other than one mishap, which I, thankfully wasn't in a race run. It was actually after uh, day one race. I did get a dent in my rear wheel, uh, but I'm, I'll tell you what, these things have been running, ama they've been running amazing during all my race runs, and I had no mechanicals throughout all six stages. And I'll tell you what, that race was really gnarly, so um, having confidence in your uh, in your wheels and tires is going to be huge because otherwise you can't pl you won't have confidence to plow through uh, areas that you normally uh, might consider. Now we're going to be talking about bike setup. 
So bike setup is going to be huge. I'm tell I'll tell you what, it's it's huge. So that's something that you guys really should pay attention to before a race. So getting your suspension dialed in, getting your tire pressure dialed in, your cockpit set, make sure you're happy with everything before you go racing. I got my shock and fork set up in a way where it's kind of harsh on anything uh, kind of mellow. But once you start pushing the bike, it's so composed and planted. It's super confidence inspiring when you're plowing through rock gardens and your suspension is, uh, is composed, it's supported. That's what you want when racing. Obviously, it's all personal preference. Whatever feels good to you is what you got. You should run. But for me personally, I like to run a little bit more uh, compression and a bit more rebound to keep the bike really composed when I'm really pushing it. Don't go changing anything before a race. Try to stick with stuff that you are very comfortable with. That's another thing that is, is pretty big. You don't want to go to a race and you're like, oh, I'm on a new shock or I'm running new brakes. Like that's not the best thing to do because you're not gonna be adapted to that and, and you're not gonna be fully adapted to that even after practice. So I would recommend not trying anything too substantial before a race. You wanna make sure you're pretty comfortable with everything you have. The only thing I did that um, I, I haven't been running was the Kush Core, but the Kush Core is subtle, subtle and it's not gonna really affect how you're riding. So don't change anything that is too substantial, otherwise you might get thrown off by it. Okay, so moving on to training. This is the fun part, guys. This is where you're gonna have to put in the work and effort. So this is something you're gonna wanna do like a year to six months before your race because training takes time to build muscle. So you need to start training really early on, otherwise you're not gonna get gains in a couple of months. Well, you will get gains in a couple of months, but if you really want the real gains, if you're starting off with you know legs that aren't super strong or whatever, uh, you're going to want to have a lot of time to, to build up and train. So we'll get into what I do to train. So this is something I haven't talked about much on the channel, and uh, I want to explain to you guys uh, what I do to train. So uh, I use a program called Zwift. This is probably the biggest thing that gives me my, most of my strength. So Zwift is a virtual biking program. It uses a bike on a trainer, that then connects to the program that's installed on a computer that's then displayed on like some sort of display. And you basically ride your bike virtually. It's, al it's almost like a video game, but there's torture in this video game, which is uh, where all the gains come from. So Zwift is what I use personally, and they have tons of workout plans on there that are actually tailored towards you. So all you need to do is get all the equipment for Zwift. So what you're gonna need to start Zwift is going to be a smart trainer. A smart trainer is a trainer that can, can connect to the program and it's not variable resistance. Well, it technically is, but what, it re what, uh, what the smart stands for is adjustable variation in uh, the resistance. So basically in the game, if you're about to go up a hill, you're gonna feel it. It's going to make it feel like you're going up a hill. And so uh, that's what the smart is. You need a smart trainer for, uh, for Zwift, otherwise uh, it isn't gonna work very well. So get a smart trainer. I have the cheapest one you can get from Wahoo, which is the Wahoo Kicker Snap. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below where you guys can pick one up. It's about $300, uh, which is way on the cheaper side when in terms of trainers. And then uh, for bike, if you have an old road bike, a lot of, some people have a bunch of uh, old stuff in their garage and one of it might be a road bike. So if you have a road bike, it doesn't need to be new. It just needs to be a road bike. Either grab one out of your garage if you have one, or if you don't have one, look on Facebook Marketplace because you can find some steals. I got a, a nice road bike for $80 and it barely had any problems. So you don't need anything nice. You don't need fancy brakes because you're not trying, you're not stopping when on the trainer. You just want some reasonable shifting, you're gonna want three by because uh, otherwise you're gonna to top out uh, a lot in Zwift. So get something with a three by. And that's pretty much all you're gonna need is those two things in a laptop. A couple of training programs that I would recommend using are um, Dirt Destroyer and Single Track Slayer. Those two are built by the same, same creators 
and they have had a huge impact on uh, my fitness. And so I'd highly recommend those. I train about five times a week. I'll get into my second form of training in a bit here, but I'm on the trainer uh, once every other day. So I'll do one session, which tends to be about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, and they're high intensity, so you get gains out of only an hour of working out versus doing uh, maybe a lower intensity for uh, three to four hours. So that's what I would do personally. I used to do it every single day. And the problem with doing it every single day is you get burnt out. So every other day seems to be a great balance between uh, gains and uh, not getting burnt out. So now I'll move on to my second form of uh, training, which is actually going to be CrossFit. So uh, I go to CrossFit about two times, two to three times per week. So with enduro racing, it's not just legs. You also have your arms, your, your core, there's a lot going on that is not just your legs. You need to work out other muscles. So CrossFit has been great because they have all types of movements. You have your compound lifts, you got your more technical lifts, and then you also have calisthenics style stuff. And so this is going to build your core, it's gonna build your arms, it's gonna build your forearms, it's gonna build your lats, it's gonna build all that stuff that you need for riding. Because when racing, some of those stages are going to be really long and you need to keep your body in a good, efficient position. You need to be on top of it. And so having the ability to stay focused and stay in pretty good reasonable uh, strength condition going downhill is going to be huge because the more fatigued you are the more mistakes you're going to make and the more time you're going to lose on those downhills so i would recommend crossfit or at least going to the gym and having some sort of structure because that's going to be huge when it comes to mountain bike racing okay so now we'll move on to the last bit which is going to be race nutrition so what i'm about to say is going to be for any racing a couple days before uh, up to the, the day of the race so uh, this is going to include dinner, this is going to include breakfast, stuff like that, and then same with hydration. So we'll start with food. Food's pretty important. So to about two days before your race, start eating more than you usually would. And uh, tailor it towards carbs. I'm no health guy by any means, but I have kind of researched and kind of figured out what seems to work best for everybody. And so for this is what I'm about to tell you is what has worked really good for me. And so, uh, yeah, let's get into that. So you're gonna wanna start eating about two days before your race. When I mean eating, I mean eating more than you usually would. And keep it a little bit more carbs based. You wanna start carbo, they call it carbo loading, where you're starting to car uh, uh, stack up those carbs so you have energy for race day. So start doing that about one to two days before your race. Um, you also have practice, so you need to be uh, on top of that too. Uh, depending on if your race has practice, that is. So yeah, be on top of the, getting food in. So eating dinner, pasta's good, anything that has carbs, pizza, whatever. Breakfast, this is going to be breakfast for the race. So you wake up in the morning, you're ready to go racing, but you gotta fuel yourself. So, so what I do before my race, it, this all depends on how much climbing there is going to be in the race. But for me personally, my last race, there wasn't that much climbing. And uh, I'm sure most of you guys can relate that eating is hard in the morning. So getting something that tastes good, that has the nutrition you need, and uh, you can get it down is going to be best. So for me personally, what worked was yogurt. So I had vanilla yogurt and I put it in a bowl. Put a, you put, want to put quite a bit into the bowl. And then I used blueberries, I used granola, and I used honey. Those are going to be good for race fuel. So uh, for the day of that is. And so uh, that really worked well for me, but you might need a little more if you're doing a lot of climbing. So you might want to throw in some eggs or some toast uh, or some sort of meat uh, to uh, add more uh, nutrition to kind of sustain you for a certain amount of time. And then uh, there's going to be nutrition for riding. You need to stay fueled up. And uh, one thing that I can definitely tell you is you want to stay fueled up and you do not want to get to that point where you're feeling fatigued. Have a plan on what you're going to do. So for me personally, at the bottom of each stage, I would eat two of these Stinger Energy Gummies. And those worked extremely well. Those will keep your energy up. And if you have a plan on how many you're going to eat at the bottom of each stage, 
uh, you're never gonna you're gonna avoid getting to the point where you're feeling fatigued because once you get to uh, once you get fatigued, it's hard to work yourself back up to that point where you were before you uh, before you kind of fell off a cliff. Also, try to plan on eating bars in between because the gummies are not gonna uh, have all the nutrition you need. So. Uh, get some sort of uh, protein bars or some sort of bar, some sort of solid bar that uh, you can eat. So I'd probably say that works best for me. Um, everybody's different. Some people don't run very well on uh, you know sweet, sugary things, and they need more uh, sustainable food so like eggs, meats, maybe uh, maybe some carbs to go with it. But mostly needs to be kind of dense food. And so if that works for you, don't switch because I said something about it. We'll do whatever works for you, but for most people, what I do should work uh, pretty well. This is what most people would do. And uh, now we'll talk about hydration. This one is pretty quick and simple. Uh, it is very important though, and it can get overlooked uh, quite often. So, what uh, what I do for hydration is start hydrating a day or, again a day or two before the race. You want to make sure your system is hydrated. Uh, because it can sometimes take days to rehydrate it because most people don't drink enough water in the, uh, to begin with. So start hydrating, drink water, and then uh, I would add electrolytes to your water uh, if you can uh, a day before. That seemed to work really well for me. There's been times where I've raced and I hydrated so much before that I didn't even get thirsty until like a couple hours in, which was kind of shocking to me. So that really showed how... Uh, being hydrated can uh, impact uh, riding. So really stay on top of hydrating and stay on top of eating as well. Those two are huge because your body needs, to, needs something to run off of. It needs, needs water, it needs food, hydrate, eat. That's pretty much it. Like I can't really think of too many other things that are really crucial in terms of racing. Obviously, I probably didn't cover everything but uh, I tried to cover as much as I can. And if there was anything that I did miss that you guys have questions about, just leave a comment down below. If this did help you, please smash that like button down below. And if you'd see, like to see more videos like this or anything like technical, bike related, uh, please smash that subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. And if you guys would like to see videos like this or riding clips early, I have a Patreon that all my videos go out about four days to a week early. So if you guys would like a sneak peek on any of those videos, uh, be sure to check out my Patreon for as little as $5 a month. You guys get access to all my videos and a bunch of uh, Patreon exclusive videos too. And remember guys, full send or no send.